There, spiders of the fell race of Ungoliant abode, spinning their unseen webs in which all living things were snared. And monsters wandered there that were born in the long dark before the sun, hunting silently with many eyes. No food for elves or men was there in that haunted land, but death only. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Happy almost Halloween as well. Just like I do every year, I like to have my video closest to Halloween be about something spooky or unnerving within the Legendarium, so today we are talking about the infamous giant spiders of Tolkien's works. I have made previous videos on Ungoliant and Shelob both, so I'll link those with other sources for today's video in the description and cards, as today we dive into this species at large and look at why Tolkien used spiders specifically in his works. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's begin our tale. The giant spiders of Middle-earth, Ungol, meaning spider in Sindarin, were offspring of pure, void-like evil. While we of course have regular spiders in the real world, as did Middle-earth, this other breed of spiders were giant in size, entirely holistically evil in nature, and enigmatic in other ways as well. Ungoliant was a strange creature of Middle-earth, in the years of the trees. An evil spirit which took the form of a spider in the world. And while she seems entirely different from Maiar and Valar in her spiritual nature, she had power akin to such entities, whose nature was like that of a black hole, only strengthened by the light and life it devours. After Melkor allied himself with the creature, she devoured many gems and the light of Valinor itself, the sap and wells of the two trees, which made her into an even more fearsome and terrible beast, one capable of showing Melkor himself fear. She was such a void upon Middle-earth that she possessed a shroud of something called Unlight, something she could weave into webs of darkness. When she wished to devour the Silmarils, and Melkor did not give them up, they turned on each other, and it was only the flame of the Balrogs that drove her away. After this happened, she fled southeast towards Doriath, coming to the Mountains of Terror, the arid Gorgoroth, and somehow Ungoliant brought forth terrible giant spiders, the ones that would go on to infest parts of the world. She would eventually continue south and would, in the end, devour herself, at least according to some tales. Yet her darkness would live on in her offspring, at least in some form. These spiders, by all accounts, seem to deviate from normal spiders in some interesting ways. Of course, they are giant, at least as large as men, if not larger. But they also seemingly possessed stingers, or perhaps that was just another word for bite, and had eyes that were more faceted, like those of other insects rather than those of arachnids. Now this is interesting because it's things like this that make them monsters in their own right, not just versions of the spiders we know in real life. Striking an interesting similarity in my mind to the difference between wolves and wargs in Tolkien's works, where there are even different biological features at play. These spiders would present problems for many a protagonist in Tolkien's world. Baron, son of Barahir for one, would journey through the Arid Gorgoroth and face these and other untold horrors in that evil land. It is possible he even fought Shelob herself. Now just as a shadow that leaks into places without light, unseen but present still, these spiders multiplied and somehow spread to other corners of the world. Apparently Shelob came to the outskirts of Mordor, to the Ethel Duoth, the Mountains of Shadow, before Sauron came to Mordor and laid the first stone of Barad-dûr, and dwelt there longer than he did. It seems she fled the ruin of Beleriand, but we are not sure exactly when that was, perhaps in the War of Wrath, perhaps before. Yet other spiders there were as well, those that came to Mirkwood in the Third Age, at some point under the shadow of the necromancer of Dol Guldor. These were seemingly the spawn of Shelob, who herself was the spawn of Ungoliant, Bilbo would of course fight to free his dwarven friends from the spiders of Mirkwood, finding the power of his sword sting, and Sam would greatly wound Shelob himself to save Frodo, who had been stung and wrapped by her. Interestingly enough, Sam fought Shelob just as Baron might have done, only a small while after he and Frodo discussed the tale of Baron and Luthien, which brings me to my next point, how Tolkien utilizes spiders in his works. Other than Baron and perhaps contextually some elves of Mirkwood behind the scenes, and perhaps the dwarves of Thorin's company if they got the chance to fight back, it was really only two hobbit heroes that faced the spiders head on. 
they acted as conflicts for both Bilbo and Sam that demonstrated the heroism and courage in combat that they had acquired through their respective adventures up to that point in time. They were not the final villains Baron, Bilbo, or Sam would face, but they were some of the most direct villains they would ever fight in a hand-to-hand -hand sort of way. These threats, especially for our hobbits, seem proportional in theme to those characters. Gross, nasty villains that the readers may also find disgust with, and these were spiders of pure malice unlike those we know in the real world. It is pondered by the Tolkien community, and there is evidence both for and against this, that Tolkien included these villains because he had a scarring experience with a spider as a child. Yet Tolkien also refuted this point as well, saying that he did not have a particular dislike of spiders, and rather he wrote The Hobbit at least for his children, and his son Michael had an abhorrence of spiders, so they were meant to frighten him. Thus, he included them as frightening aspects of his tale. Yet, they also seem to play a role of bringing courage from the meek, light against the shadow. What became of the giant spiders of Middle-earth is unknown to me. Likely with the changing of the world and the coming of the Age of Men, the spiders that were descended from Ungoliant would be wiped away from the world, either from a lack of prey in orcs and free peoples coming through their homes, or from the colonization of the world by men. And so, we come to the end of our tale on the giant spiders of Middle-earth. From this tale, we see that, like our heroes, we must find the courage to face the most enshrouded and foul evils that will confront us in our lives. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts on the giant spiders of Middle-earth? Let me know in the comments below. They are interesting and vile creatures that serve a really cool archetypal role in the narrative for making our heroes the most courageous versions of themselves. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider getting some candles from our friends Mythology Candles, or order some Weta or United Cutlery Lord of the Rings swords, statues, and other replicas from Castle Khan, who does international shipping, and use the code WEST at checkout, and please check out our merch and Patreon. Thanks to our Valor Tier patrons and YouTube members, Peter Shepard, Blair Scout and Merton, John Hume, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Reese Jenkins, Arthur Merlin, Dale Davis, Kingswald Project, Robert Bogue, Theodore, and Moon Viper. Thank you so much to all of our patrons and YouTube members. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today, and I'll see you all again next week with a video on King Fingon the Valiant. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.